Hi, in this video tutorial, we'll be using BDMX and Ableton Live to create an audio visual synthesizer. To begin, we're going to start in Ableton Live and we're going to add an instrument track in here. So we'll look for our 505 kit, which we'll use for this. I'm going to do everything on MIDI channel 2 for now, which you can use whatever MIDI channel that you want. And let's also add on a basic phase flanger. We can drag that onto here. Okay, so now we have a basic effect and we have a instrument. And now I'm going to switch over to VDMX and we're going to use a control surface plugin to create a virtual interface for the MIDI values that we'll be sending over to Ableton Live. So for the 505 kit, I'm going to use a multi button interface. And here I'm going to switch this to being a 4x4 grid. I'm going to want these to be momentary buttons, but I do want them to be mutually exclusive. And then under the sending tab, I'll go here. I'll add a sender, add it to MIDI, and I'm going to use an IEC driver for this. And I'm going to set the note range to what we need for the 505 kit, which I think is going to be 36 to 51. Now, if I do this, oh, what do we have to do? Let's load up MIDI monitor and make sure that we're seeing the actual MIDI. So MIDI values are coming out. We forgot to, of course, set it to the right channel. So under channel, I'll set that to two. And now, all right, there we go. We've got some sounds coming out with our virtual pads here in VDMX. Next up, we're gonna change the name of this. We'll just call this 505 kit so we know exactly what that set of controls does. Next, we'll add a slider and we're just gonna call this our 505 flange wet dry and we'll use that for this and similarly I'm going to now click on this slider we'll go under the sending tab add a MIDI sender and I'm going to make sure to use channel 2 this time we'll go over to Ableton Live we'll switch into MIDI learn mode click on the parameter we want to adjust move that in here go back to live switch out of MIDI mode and now we should be able to control the wet drive that. So if we bring this all the way up. Okay. Now we can also go in here and there's other things we could do like uh, have it send immediate note offs or mutually exclusive note offs. If you want to have multiple, if you want to turn off the mutually exclusive option up there, but for now we're just going to leave it with the immediate note offs like this. If we want, we can, add a preset here so that we can always get back to this. You can use the preset controller and we can call this manual control if we ever want to jump back to that specific preset of controls where nothing is really assigned. Next I can go and add an audio analysis plugin. So we'll do the reverse now and we're going to pull audio back from live and we're going to use that to generate visuals in VDMX. So in my audio analysis inspector I'll go in here and I'll grab from live directly. And now we're grabbing all of that audio directly here in my media bin from VDMX. Now I'll let's switch over here and let's open up our layer source control so we can see what's going on there. Move this down here and I'll add a preview window so we can see what our output looks like. There we go. So here's what layer one's going to look like. Here's the source controls for layer one. Here's what the audio analysis that we'll use for generating values. And here is our control surface of values that we are using to generate the audio. So for starters, I'm just going to go in here and I'll right click and from the built-in sources under ISFs, I'm just going to choose a very basic one for starters. We'll just do a, maybe a solid color generator to start and I'll trigger that onto my layer. And I'll just do some basic assignments. So we'll do filter one, filter two, and filter three. And now, not particularly exciting, but we have a little something going on. Okay. We can, of course, go a little bit further and add in maybe under ISFs, under audio visualizer, I'm going to add in the audio waveform shape. And now this one, you can see this has some alpha channels here. I'm going to inspect the preview here and let's not show the alpha channel so we can see a little bit better what's going on. So now we're going to grab for this also from our audio analysis waveform. We can do that. Okay. That's a little bit something else. And now we can, of course, still do the same with the wave color in here. Set this to 
this, set this to this, and that to that. I've got something a little bit crazier going on here. So let's get that in the floating window too, so we can, if we needed to, we can get that to the full screen output. Okay, now we have a nice little synthesizer going on here. And for the final step, I'm going to add in a step sequencer plugin, and we can use that to control our 505 kit. So I'm going to use the UI inspector for this. And under the navigation tab, I'm going to have the, we can do choose by float here. And I'll do that for our step sequencer, track one. This is being controlled by our clock plugin. So I can open up the clock, do some, go under sync and turn on Ableton link there and turn on link here. And now synchronize our two clocks. And then I'll add in maybe an LFO plugin and I can maybe grab sine wave or so sine, whichever one you want. And now the wet line effect is being controlled by our LFO. Uh, and we're using our step sequencer to create some sounds. And we've got our visuals here being generated. And that is how you make a very quick audio visual synthesizer using live uh, MediaMix. Thanks for watching.